Right then, today we're at property. There is a bit of a weird sort of decay going on here. You don't very often see this. I first seen this about six years ago and I was thinking, what is that? But, a little bit of research, we find out it's something called Tychogaster. Now, what you're gonna see here is, this is a brown rot, and you can just see down here, I'll just touch it gently. It just literally disintegrates when you touch it. It's all puffs up, it's nothing, you know, literally just touch it, just squats to nothing. It's like a dust, lots of spores. But as you can see, this is significant here. Now, you can see a lot of the white strands on top of the boards. That's all on top of the boards. None of that is um, on the underside. And all the sort of like pinky, browny, cushiony bits are all on the joist plates and the undersides of the boards. And you can actually see distortion in the timber here. So, it, you know, effectively it doesn't actually look too bad. You've got that thin surface veneer, it looks okay, but actually inside the timber's gone. You can just see on there, see how much it's bent. But, yes, so one of the causes, <coughs> so when you're looking at moisture issues in the subfloor, you're looking at ventilation issues from the subfloor ventilation, and also internal atmospheric conditions when you're getting a high vapour pressure being driven into the subfloor. That can be a cause as well, and typically on this sort of era of building, they're quite tight, shall we say, compared to an older building, where there's lots of good natural ventilation with rattly old windows and chimneys, etc. Now, here, I just want to show you a couple of things out here. We've also got a magnesite flooring. But I'm not going to talk about magnesite as of yet. I've got another video on that coming. So when you're looking at this sort of property, it's cavity construction. Now, typically as well, I know this has been injected because I've had a little look in there with cavity wall insulation. So when you're looking at here along here, you're looking for the subfloor ventilation. Now, what you typically find is, let's get in this one here as it's a bit better. You can actually see down there, you've got lots of holes being drilled in. Now some of these have been covered up actually, where the ground's gone up a little bit higher. But what that basically means is that is the subfloor ventilation. Now perhaps that was good enough um, before the cavity wall insulation has been put in. But what happens is, typically when you're looking at this here, that, that should have been taken out and they should have actually made a proper little um, proper vent with some ducting going through to the subfloor, but it never happened. So as soon as you see cavity wall insulation has been put in on that type where you've got the holes in there, you know it's been bodged up. Another really important factor is as well, is cross flow ventilation. Because <coughs> that is what you're typically looking for when you're trying to ventilate a subfloor properly. So when you look in this property here, as we know, we've got a magnesite floor down. Here, we've got a solid floor. Now, I'm going to give away my, one of my little tips here. If you're looking at, again, this sort of property, again, I know my housing stock around my area massively. You know, I've worked on thousands of these buildings for Wiltshire Council, Green Square, Selwood, and all my private um, landlords and all my private clients. So I've got massive housing stock memory and I know what's going on with a lot of buildings. Just, bef just when I'm initially taking the original phone call because you know the area. Now again here, you can see the paths come up. And you can also see there, as the holes again, yeah? And if we just walk down to here, you can see some down there as well. So, is there gonna be subfloor vents there? It's a solid floor. Now, some people might ask, well, perhaps they put, perhaps it was suspended timber and then that was put back to concrete and they blocked them. That's a good point because it happens a lot, you know, a, a lot of time. But what you'll find is as well on a lot of these properties that I know of, if you look down there, just going to show you down there, you can see a duct. Now that duct goes through that floor and it should mate up on the outside with the holes drilled in the wall. We've also got another one there. I'm just going to show you in there. This is, we just put the drain camera down there as you can see. 
it's blocked. Now on the other one, I've gone down there and you can actually see there's debris in there. Um, it's not a very good picture to be fair on the other one, just simply because you're so close to all the debris um, and there's lots of cobwebs and that down there, you can't really um, get a clear defined picture, but you can see there's debris there. Now typically again, and I've used the word typically a lot here, <coughs> normally there would be a connection when this pipe comes through the floor to those little holes down there. I've never seen them connected. Now, perhaps that's because they would never were supposed to be ever connected and they were just vent ventilating up through the cavity. But obviously if you're thinking about it, if you want to ventilate the floor, you want a connection all the way through the cavity. So that's actually air or vapor, whatever you want to say, is going in and out. Now, if you could imagine now, as soon as you go and put cavity wall insulation across that gap and it's not been sleeved properly, you know you're going to bridge all across through the um, pipework and you're going to change that balance of the floor. Now, you know here, again, there's no, there's no renew pointing, there's no air brick, there's nothing there to say that when they've done the cavity wall insulation, they've actually sleeved all this through. So when you're looking at um, timber decay and woodworm stuff use, um, woodworm problems, these sort of things are intermittent. So when you're looking at a floor, it's not always going to be a problem, especially in the summer. But when you get in the winter months and you're getting cold temperatures, you're getting high vapor pressures in the inside of the property, and timber is absorbing a lot of wood. I'm not talking about like hygroscopic moisture, we're talking about water actually being absorbed into the timber. Now, whilst timber, when it's in a warm environment, like on a floor, like say here on the surface, it can let moisture go very quickly. When it's under a cold subfloor and it's wet, like soaking wet, it is not going to let that moisture go. So it's going to stay there and it's going to start attacking the timber. So when you're getting 25% moisture contents of the timber, that is when you're looking at decay issues to start occurring. Um, and obviously when it gets a little bit lower, it can stay a little bit dormant and it can stay there waiting again for the right time for everything to be germinating. But as you can see here, this is spore heaven. There is literally spores everywhere. As long as that floor is gonna stay wet, that is when you're gonna get your problems. Now I just wanna show you out here in a minute because I just wanna show you this um, cavity wall insulation in the wall. <coughs> Let's just turn it on so I've got it in the right place here. Just um, get out of the side a minute. So you can actually see there. Oh, let's get it in front of the screen. That's the insulation there. I'll just move that about in there a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. So, yep. Yeah. Now that is through that vent there, as you can see. And that is restricting that subfloor ventilation. And as a consequence, you've got these problems in here. Now, this is typical, again, I'm using the word typical, of these sort of problems we find all the time. So when you're taking that building slightly out of balance by, you know, extra people living in the house, mechanical ventilation is not quite right. You know, you're blocking up the subfloor ventilation. You're getting these problems. Now this is, you know, a property that's got a damp proof course. It's got a physical damp proof course. You're not going to get genuine rising damp on here. And you can actually see along there, you've got a bitchy um, damp proof course. You can also see you've got one just down there. But look at these timbers here, the skirting board. Look at the woodworm. Look. And this is all because of all this moisture within the floor. And this is an absolute health and safety issue here because just say for instance you had a laminate floor across here and you felt a little bit spongy and some people think ah it's just a cheap floor it's just moving about a little bit well beneath this is the sort of thing that can happen you can see you know you've got 4b2 timber there just completely destroyed on that joist you've got all these floorboards here like you know there's nothing to them you've got you know, heavy infestation in some areas. 
you can see the tongue's just disintegrated. And you can see, and there you've got all your growth from all the spores and everything everywhere. And the floor is nice and wet. I just want to show you the underside of it a minute as well. Just put my hand underneath there. And you can see, that's condensation, they're soaking wet. But that's what I'm trying to say, like when, you, when you're getting these um, moisture issues underneath the floor, that is not going to release it. That cold is predominantly, that, that floor is predominantly very cold in the winter months. So there's no going to be no evaporation taking place, hardly, you know, it's been a lim limited amount. That's why you need to control all the internal atmospherics and make sure all the subfloor ventilation is perfectly installed and not tipping the balance. And you can see, along with the ductings being blocked up on both of them, um, there's probably a bit of rubble in there from early construction, cavity wall insulation, <coughs> bit of problems with the ventilation inside the property. And you can see all of us just tip the balance and this is what's happened. I hope this has been some use. If you like to see more of this sort of stuff, subscribe!